Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast for our final segment of the day where I want to dive into the different landing spots for Devontae Adams and, you know, less so talk about the logistics of whether or not it could happen. But just from a football perspective, hypothetically, if Devontae were to end up in these different spots, then I just want to talk about you know, what that would look like from an impact on the football field perspective. So I want to start off with the New York Jets because that is the team that has obviously been the most heavily rumored up to this point. I think it would be all the world of a difference, honestly, for the Jets. And I'm not saying it would solve every single one of their problems. I still feel like they've had a pretty hard time running between the tackles. Their offensive line, I think, is good overall. But obviously, this past week, so much talk about the cadence and everything like that. I'm not worried whatsoever. I think their offensive line will be just fine, ultimately. But There's been a lot of dysfunction on that offense. A lot of it has been Aaron Rodgers not being able to get on the same page with his weapons. And I think it would be a seamless transition of bringing Devontae Adams in, having him be able to also lead the way on the rest of the team. You know, I think that maybe you can make the argument, and I saw somebody on ESPN earlier this morning making the argument of, oh, well, you are going to stunt the growth of a Garrett Wilson. Ultimately, the Jets know that this season is all about winning a championship, and I don't think that they're at that level right now. Devontae Adams jump starts your offense to getting to another place. Now, maybe it makes Garrett Wilson a little bit unhappy. He's still going to play these football games. And ultimately, again, it's just kind of this year a bust. There is no plan B after this season. And maybe it's Aaron Rodgers playing another year after this. We'll have to see. I'm sure that it's way too early to have that conversation at this moment. The Jets need to be able to, you know, find what their identity is on the offensive side of the ball. I think that Devontae Adams would do miracles for that Jets offense. I talked about before yesterday that this is, I think, the clear choice of where Adams should end up. I think that, you know, another team that we'll talk about, again, Taking logistics out of it, I don't think the Raiders, there's any world really where they trade him to the Chiefs, but hypothetically, what would Adams look like on the Chiefs? And the answer would be devastating because I think that Adams sort of provides almost the similar skill set that I think Rasheed Rice was beginning to, but do so at a Hall of Fame level where Rice was finding a way to really, you know, build up his skills of a route runner and finding open space. And Devontae Adams can do all of that. He can also play a little bit bigger in the red zone. And I think it would take a ton of pressure as well off of, again, Kelsey, who we just talked about in the last segment. Seems like he showed some signs of life this past week against the Chargers. I still don't know if I'm fully buying into is that super sustainable because during the regular season last year, he was the number one option and basically the only option. And it resulted in a fine offensive season, but they were also very mediocre in terms of being a scoring offense, something I think it was the first time out of the top six or so that the Chiefs have been or the first time that the Chiefs have been out of the top six, something along those lines, since Mahomes took over with the Chiefs. And that's just obviously not what you hope for out of having the best quarterback in the NFL. You need more. And it can't all be on his shoulders that a move like this would be revolutionary for that offense. I think it opens up a lot of that intermediate game gives you extra attention even more so than you were getting with Rasheed Rice and it does sort of continue to open up the even more opportunities probably inherently for Xavier Worthy that I mean I think a little bit of a similar comp obviously different players entirely but you look at having Justin Jefferson on the Vikings. You bring back Jordan Addison, who I still think is a little bit more polished than Xavier Worthy. But, you know, Justin Jefferson, 
He does a lot of the stuff in the middle of the field. Devontae Adams can do that. And it also just sort of sucks extra attention towards him where you have guys like Jordan Addison running free. I think the same would be for Xavier Worthy, able to get those extra opportunities if Devontae Adams is drawing that much attention, which I am sure he would. I am not worried about the lack of production that we've seen over these past couple years. The Raiders are a little bit of a mess there. So I think that, I mean, again, talking purely hypotheticals here, and while we stick with the hypotheticals, we might as well talk about the Dallas Cowboys, who supposedly don't have any interest in Devontae Adams up to this point, which doesn't shock me knowing how hesitant the Cowboys usually are to move off of draft capital, which is slightly infuriating because I also just don't think that they've been that great of a drafting team in recent years, and that's part of the reason why they have so many holes, especially on that defensive side of the ball. But Devontae Adams, I mean, it's a situation where any team should have at least some interest in him. Logistically, though... I don't know if it is necessarily worth the investment that it would cost the Cowboys to make a deal like this. I mean, they still have unfinished deals on the table, specifically looking at Micah Parsons. But, you know, on that note, the defense has as many holes as it does. The offensive line still isn't very good. The running back room isn't all that talented. That I think there are a lot of other issues. It is true that CD is the only real playmaker that the Cowboys currently have on offense. So adding Devontae Adams objectively, of course, would make them better. But it wouldn't make me feel all that different about what I currently do, which is that they have issues, I think, just about everywhere outside of that quarterback and wide receiver one position that... You know, maybe when their defense is fully healthier, they have a better secondary, they have some edge rushers, but there's just too many holes right now, I think, and it would make them a lot more fun of an offense, definitely a lot more dynamic. I mean, we've seen, you know, last week the Cowboys playing against the Giants. We saw CD lining up in the backfield, getting a little bit creative there that, I mean, they would be able to move pieces around and get defenses confused, but I don't think it would ultimately change who they are. It would make their passing game a little bit better. It would probably boost their stats, but I would still have all the same problems that I do currently have with them, and I don't think that having Devontae Adams on the roster as well would fix those issues, even on the offensive side of the ball. But some of the other teams... Buffalo Bills, I think, would be extremely interesting as well. Talking about the Bills sort of losing Stephon Diggs, having that be a huge deal in the offseason, and then getting an upgrade in Devontae Adams for a little bit of a discounted price. Feels like that would be elite. And I think that Devontae Adams would be kind of the perfect piece to Josh Allen where you look at those plays like he had on Sunday night where he was basically it was the first drive of the second half and he's rolling to the right he's basically running out of bounds and he's able to find a Khalil Shakir 30 or so yards down the field and he's able to pick up a gain ultimately of something like 50 yards where those big play potentials would be you know everywhere for the Bills that you would have so many different layers to the offense where you now have a developed run game with James Cook. That offensive line has been incredible up to this point, so they can be a little bit more traditional there. But then when you do get the, you know, head on fire Josh Allen, you know, you have a a player that can basically get to the ball from any position running deep. You have so much extra attention that's sort of wrapped up in him. I think it probably does, you know, open up a lot more opportunities for the likes of a Khalil Shakir, some of their tight ends, and Kincaid and Knox, who are good players. None of them are number one receiving threats, though. And I think just adding that makes the entire receiving core that much better. I think it adds, again, plays very well into the Josh Allen crazy person offense that sometimes they need to unhinge when they get desperate, that 
I think it would be a ton of fun to watch that. And again, I we talked about this earlier in the show. I do feel like they still have some losses and deficiencies on defense, but come playoff time, if that defense is healthy, Matt Milano, Terrell Bernard back playing for them. We saw that the Bills defense is able to play well enough to, you know, be competitive in some of these games against opposing teams. And, you know, again, maybe got run on in the Arizona game and in the Baltimore game. They wouldn't be perfect, but I do feel like it would be a situation where the Bills can be considered, you know, the number one team in the NFL, which it's not that they can't now. I mean, a lot of people had them number one in the power rankings coming into last week, but I do feel like this is a situation where, you know, the Bills, they could take their game up a whole nother level. Another name, another team that I want to at least mention here that, you know, Patriots legend Jason McCourty brought up earlier today on ESPN and such. Um, I think it's Jason. Him and Devin look too similar for me. But whichever one of the McCordys, I think it's Jason that works at ESPN. He was talking about the Washington Commanders as a potential destination for Devontae Adams as well. And I think it would be a ton of fun. Now, I'd maybe have a little bit of sympathy for Terry McLaurin, who finally now has a quarterback that, you know, he can be the number one option for, and then you would go out and get a bigger name receiver than him, and maybe he doesn't get the same amount of looks. Terry McLaurin's had so much patience up to this point that based off of what we know about his personality at this point and all the sort of behind-the-scenes stories that at least I personally have heard about him... I think it's about the process for him, and I think he would just be on board to field a really competitive team once again. I'm sure that McLaurin would still get all of his opportunities as well. It's not like Devontae Adams would come in and steal all the shine. I do think there's a good chance he would take a lot of the shine, though. So, McLaurin, again, been through so much in Washington. You're talking about Jaden Daniels is his 11th quarterback since McLaurin was drafted to Washington in 2019 that I feel like he would like some sense of stability now that things are rounding the corner. But, again, I don't want to speculate on what McLaurin's reaction to that would be. In terms of on the field, though, it would be a ton of fun as well as it is this Washington offense that's up and coming and I think it would really do wonders for Jaden Daniels for continuing to push the ball further and further downfield where that is something that you know during the first couple games over 50% of his completions were at or behind the line of scrimmage and we're starting to see him take those deeper shots you got the way deeper shots with Terry McLaurin specifically in that week three game against the Bengals but I'm talking about maybe in that 10, 15, 20 yard range as well, those intermediate throws that I do think that Jaden Daniels did pretty well for himself this past week against the Cardinals, really other than that interception where it probably pushed it even a little bit further downfield than that, but I do feel like Devontae Adams would be able to add this extra element at this point. And again, this is why I say that I don't think it would take away too many targets from Terry McLaurin. They really don't have a wide receiver, too, at this current point. I know, you know, if you listen to the broadcasts, they talk about Zacchaeus and the role that he can potentially have moving forward. But Devontae Adams would be, obviously, and again, you want to talk about wide receiver 1-2, I think it would be more like a 1A, 1B situation. And that's where you can see sort of even bigger steps. Again, Zacchaeus, he might just be good enough to be able to hold on on to his wide receiver two role, but I think we all know that Devontae, Devontae Adams would be a much better, you know, top two target for Washington, and I think it could do wonders as well for, you know, the growth of Jaden Daniels that Devontae Adams Seems like within the past year or so, he's learned a little bit more of the selflessness. He's talked about the idea of he can be on board with getting a little bit less targets as long as there is an actual functioning offense. Well, the commanders seem to be a very highly functioning offense. I think we'd learn a ton about Jaden Daniels himself 
if he was gifted with somebody like Devontae Adams on top of having Terry McLaurin as well, that I got to sort of get this out of my mind of this idea of putting up a rookie season similar to C.J. Stroud. Not saying that necessarily, but you could be looking at, you know, what's already off been off to a very high start. You're looking at highest completion percentage by any player in NFL history through the first four weeks of a season. That is Jaden Daniels. We talked about the stat yesterday. I think it's at 82%. I can double check that here. I have it somewhere in my notes, 82.1%. So already pretty impressive, but we could be reaching new heights in terms of the explosiveness, the dynamic aspects of this offense. So I think it would be a lot of fun, but if you have another team you want to hear my thoughts on how Devontae Adams would fit in their system, let drop a comment. Let us know what you want to hear about as well. But that is all the time we have for today. Thank you very much for tuning into the GSMC Sports Podcast. Thank you to the GSMC Sports Network for allowing us to host this show. Remember to like, follow, subscribe wherever you keep up with us. Be sure to check us out on social media as well. And we will be back at... 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern tomorrow afternoon. We'll have thoughts on tonight's game for the Thursday night football game, Falcons-Buccaneers. We'll talk a little bit of baseball as well with that game three matchup. So a whole lot to dive into tomorrow. Do not want to miss it. We will see you then. Take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet, yeah, damn, ain't that great.